Hi, today I'm going to be telling you about our paper, SAMI, which is joint work with collaborators from Netflix and from Stanford. In our paper, we look at streaming video traffic because this is the majority of the internet today, somewhere between 65 and 75%, depending on where you are. Our goal in this paper is to make video traffic friendlier, to do something to video traffic that will improve the performance of neighboring applications that are sharing the same networks, maybe by increasing their throughput, reducing their queuing delay, or their packet loss. One of the reasons that Netflix is interested in this research is if we can do this, we can also improve their performance for video itself. Because video is such a large fraction of the internet, there are probably many places on the internet where it's sharing networks with itself. But when we think about how to make video traffic friendlier, it's not really clear how we can do that. This is because we think about things like friendliness as sort of the domain of congestion control algorithms, which pick the throughput for video. So we have our server, and our server is sending data to our client, and it's doing this by picking an instantaneous throughput with some goals, which are to fully utilize the network, to send as quickly as possible, and to fairly share the network with neighbors. So maybe we get some throughput that drops down and then it comes back up. The challenge is that, well, we might get those, those rebuffers where uh, the throughput is just not high enough to download the video without interruptions. To deal with this, we have what are called adaptive bitrate algorithms. We take our video, we split our video up into a few second long chunks, and we encode those chunks in a range of different bit rates, from a high quality, good looking bit rate to a low quality, uh, bad looking bit rate. The ABR algorithm will then go chunk by chunk and switch between different chunks to match whatever throughput the network is giving it. And in doing so, it can trade off lower quality for fewer rebuffers. In general, these ABR algorithms run sophisticated optimization algorithms to optimize for overall quality of experience or QoE of the video, which is a trade-off between bitrate, rebuffers, and also play delay, or how long it takes to start playing the video. The challenge, though, is we tend to think about these congested networks as a zero-sum sort of situation, where if the neighbors improve, that means the video traffic itself must get worse. Maybe we give up some throughput to the neighbor, and this means that video is worse because it's getting worse bitrate. In our paper, we show that this is not necessarily the case, and we can actually make video traffic friendlier while maintaining the same QoE as today top production algorithms. In doing so, our work suggests that congestion control algorithms should be based on the QoE needs of the application. And if they can do this, there's significant room for improvement. The insight that lets us make progress here is that video today is not usually limited by throughput. There are two trends that are helping with this. One is that ISPs around the world are investing in faster networks. Data for the US is very available. Um, and in the US last year, your average US home network was about 200 to 300 megabits per second. At the same time, large video streaming services are investing more in more efficient video encoding technologies because this pretty, translate, pretty directly translates to the cost of sending the video on the internet. For instance, even the top quality 4K video today is somewhere about 10 or 20 megabits per second. And all of this together, when we look at Netflix data, on average, the instantaneous throughput that a Netflix video is getting is about 13 times higher than the video bitrate. So there's a lot of extra throughput in this system. When we zoom into what a video looks like, all of this extra throughput means that videos are very bursty and have what's known as on-off behavior. This is because video is actually limited at two different time scales. And the short-term time scale, video is limited by congestion control algorithms, which are trying to send as fast as possible during these on periods. But over the entire duration of the video, the average long-term throughput must, by definition, be equal to the video bitrate. This is because we're downloading some number of bits for the video over the entire duration of the video, which is just the bitrate. Because of this, we need something to bring down the average throughput. And so we have these off periods where we don't send anything at all. And the average throughput is reduced down to the bit rate despite these short bursty on periods. Our goal in this paper is to get rid of this on off behavior and to smooth out video traffic by reducing the throughput during on periods, like over here on the right. There are sort of two benefits to doing this. One is that we are sort of avoiding the possibility of queuing delay or packet loss during on periods because we're sending well below the capacity of the network in most networks today. For, for neighboring traffic, this also means that that traffic will get smooth, consistent available bandwidth, which is readily predictable. And this could lead to improved performance, for instance, for Zoom, gaming, streaming video, or any sort of real-time video traffic. The challenge in doing this is smoothing video traffic without reducing QoE. 
And now that we've talked about smoothing video traffic, it's sort of clear where this QE loss might come from. One is because we're downloading things slower, they'll take longer to download, and so we could increase the probability of rebuffers. Because we are downloading slower during these on periods, ABR algorithms will also measure lower throughput, and so they could switch down to lower bit rates unnecessarily. There's been a whole bunch of prior work on smoothing out video traffic in more than the last decade, but none of this work is able to smooth out video traffic while maintaining QoE. Now let me tell you about our algorithm, which is called SAMI, that smooths out video traffic while maintaining QoE. SAMI is named after the current world record holder for the world's fastest snail, which you can see in the top right there. Uh, it's sort of slowing things down, smoothing things out, but it's still fast and fast enough to get the job done. So the mechanism we use to smooth out video traffic is called application-informed pacing. Without pacing, the server is going to send data as fast as allowed to by a congestion control algorithm. With pacing, the ABR algorithm is going to request an upper limit or pace rate, and the server will send no faster than that pace rate. This is basically your standard TCP pacing, except the pace rate is picked by the ABR algorithm instead of congestion control. Application-informed pacing is very deployable on the internet today. We're going to tell you in a moment about experiments we ran in production at Netflix. We have a public open source demo with the Fastly Content Delivery Network, which you can see at this link here. And it's also supported pretty much out of the box in most recent versions of Linux. So now we have to pick a pace rate. We go into a lot of detail about this in the paper, but let me give you the brief idea here. The idea is to pick a pace rate based on the QoE needs of the video. And so what we do is we take an ABR algorithm, we figure out how much throughput that ABR algorithm needs to pick the highest bit rate, and we pick a pace rate which is just a little bit higher than that throughput. In their experiments, we wind up picking a throughput which is about three and a half times the bit rate of the video when the video buffer is empty, and about two and a half times the bit rate of the video when the video buffer is full. Now let's look at how Sammy performs in the lab. So first let's look at a standard Netflix session running on a 40 megabit per second link. Uh, the standard Netflix session will use TCP Reno. So you can see we're fully utilizing the network here, and then we have these on-off periods later on. When we look at the round trip time, the round trip time is elevated because of queuing delay when the TCP Reno is fully utilizing the network. Now we can compare to SAMI. SAMI does not limit throughput in the few moments before video starts, and we can see the corresponding increase in queuing delay. But right when the video starts, SAMI reduces throughput, and it continues reducing throughput over the course of the session. Because of this, we're sending well below the capacity of the network. There's no queuing delay after the video starts playing. Now let's look at how this impacts neighboring traffic. We'd expect sort of two things here. One is we'd expect lower queuing delay because there's no queuing delay with SAMI. And we'd also expect higher throughput because here the TCP fair share is 20 megabits per second and SAMI is sending slower. So this is basically what we see. We see improvements in UDP queuing delay. We see improvements in TCP throughput. And we also see higher level application improvements like lower HTTP response times and faster times to start playing videos. This last one is particularly exciting because it means that video services are incentivized to deploy SAMI when they share networks with themselves. Let me tell you about some large scale experiments we ran using SAMI at Netflix on production traffic. We saw reductions in many congestion related metrics. Instantaneous throughput was reduced by about 60%. Retransmits were reduced by about 50%. Round trip times were reduced by 20%. And SAMI was able to do all of this without reducing QoE. And in fact, QoE slightly improved, and you can see the deep paper for details about why that is. So SAMI reduces congestion, but I wanted to conclude by highlighting why it's a bit unusual for congestion control research. In your classic congestion control algorithm, you're just trying to send some generic data over the internet. And to do so, you need assumptions, and so you typically assume that applications benefit from higher instantaneous throughput. This leads to some challenges, and we tend to think about uh, congestion is sort of a zero-sum game, where if we improve the performance of neighbors or improve the performance of ourselves, this hurts the other people in the network. With SAMI, we have one goal, which is to stream video, because this is the majority of traffic on the internet today. Because of this, we don't need these assumptions, because we know exactly what video needs to perform well, which is that it has good QoE. As a consequence, we can actually try to minimize instantaneous throughput, and we reduce instantaneous throughput by like 60%. This is the opposite direction of the goal of typical congestion control work. We also show via SAMI that congestion, at least at the QoE level, is not necessarily a zero-sum game. We're able to reduce throughput for SAMI without reducing video QoE and improve the QoE of our neighbors. And so because of this, I would encourage us as a community to work towards making all traffic on the internet friendlier. 
I think there's a lot more we can do with video traffic, for instance, in other sorts of networks with other sorts of algorithms. And I'm sure if you think about this for a little bit, you can come up with an even better idea. There's also a lot we can do with other applications, Zoom, web browsing, and so on. And so I'm excited to see what we can do. Thank you.